what would you say to someone like myself? I've never flown a fighter jet. Is there a what's the main difference that you realize between flying fighters and non fighter airplanes, if there is one? Well, as far as um, non fighter, there's a lot of non fighter. I mean, like let's say a, a small civilian airplane, like a Cessna 152 or 172, like, like a jet. So like the jets you like fly at the airlines, like an airliner oh, okay. jet or All like right. a fighter jet, just in terms of a fighter jet being, because I hear, I read and I watched a bunch of stuff like aerodynamically or s- stability wise, they're like smack opposite, no? Well, the um, fighters actually aren't that bad. Um, you can have a very high wing loading uh, on the fighters, and they'll they'll be very stable. They're kind of rock solid and, and turbulence. You, you'll feel the bumps and the turbulence and all like that. Uh, they're much more maneuverable, which you know they have to be for the the mission they're doing. Um, so the wings are more, less likely to bend and break. Right. Got yeah. it. Yeah. They're and because you're. Uh, you're definitely pulling more G's on right. that. You know, with a airliner, you're normally uh, those are built about two and a half G's. And the F-16 was a nine G airplane. The F-4 was eight and a half G airplane. And uh, we wouldn't go up to eight and a half G's in the F-4, but we'd routinely go to six. Uh, and in the F-16, I'd go to nine G's all the time. What's and the that, highest G you've you've gone to? Nine? nine. Yeah. What's that like? Oh, it's it hurts. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I would go up uh, on the F-16, and uh, well, one thing with all that that pressure, it, uh, you know, you got everything is is nine times the weight, and so my my twenty pound head or whatever it is, you know, now weighs one hundred and eighty pounds. I got the helmet on top of that, and and also just the pressure um, straining to try and keep the blood from pooling in your extremities, and uh, so you don't lose your vision and don't lose your consciousness. How would that happen? So so I'm pulling nine Gs, what does my blood want to do? Oh, it just, well, the gravity wants to pull it down to your lower part of your body, your legs. At nine times the force that otherwise would. Yeah, you have the gravity pulling everything down, you're pulling all your internal organs down, just pulling everything. And so in the Air Force, uh, the fighters, they have G-suits. And uh, it's, uh, what does that do? So the G-suits, they look kind of like cowboy chaps, uh-huh. where you, you put them around your legs, and there's also a bladder on your abdomen, and uh, it's got a hose hooked up to it that you pu- uh, plug into the airplane. And um, in the G-suit are bladders that inflate with air. And so as you pull the Gs, uh, these bladders inflate, and they squeeze your legs, they squeeze your abdomen to try and prevent the blood from pooling down there. Oh, so some- it's is it similar to... When you go and have blood drawn? A blood pressure cuff. So gotcha. they, they have plates up in there. Same thing. Imagine that on your legs and on your abdomen. Okay. And then also there was a uh, uh, maneuver. Uh, we'd uh, get there and um, tense our muscles and strain and try and increase our blood pressure in our body to, to keep it uh, uh, from going down. And you get there and you got if I remember, it's been so many years I'm done. I haven't flown fighters in 30 years now. Um, I tell you that, God, I figure it was an M1 or G1. I'm sorry about that. But you get there, you got strain You like got to squeeze. Yeah, you strain, you just strain your body. and uh, So the squeezing is basically in addition to what the suit is doing to you. Right, yeah. So you're trying to get as much squeeze from anywhere you can take anywhere, it from. just the entire body squeezing, yeah, just to, to keep the blood up there. And that will prevent you from hopefully passing out. right. Yeah, passing out's a bad thing. We lost a lot of uh, F-16 pilots early on uh, because they passed out. Uh, G-induced loss of consciousness because it's just it's kind of, well. One thing about the F-16 is you could get to nine Gs so rapidly that guys would get there and they wouldn't have time uh, to really get into the the, the proper maneuver to uh, to strain and um, resist the Gs and the, the, and they would just lose consciousness. Wow. And the airplane, you have a uh, that fly into the ground. So I've I've watched some. I mean, I've, most people probably have watched uh, uh, Blue Angel rides that they take passengers in the back, and you mm-hmm. see the passengers passing out when yes. they pull too many G's. That's like brutal to look. At. It's it's kind of cringy to oh, see someone just is. pass out like that. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing to think that the pilot would do it. But then would you typically, so let's say someone passes out, would you typically wake up on your own or does someone need to wake you up? You'd wake up on your own, yeah. How, how many no. minutes after? It, it could happen uh, just like a, a few seconds later. When the but, blood comes back. Yeah, but it, it just, you know, if you're flying 500 miles an hour, it doesn't take long you know, to travel long distance, especially if you're heading downhill towards the ground. Right. Yeah. So many, so, so it's not as much the, 
pilot passing out as much as it is them not coming back to consciousness in time. Uh, or well, it is it is a yeah, problem. Yeah, to you, pass you, out. you don't want to pass out at all. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. when you're flying, uh, you don't want to pass out. The first thing that happens is you lose the, your vision. You start getting a tunnel vision where you lose your peripheral vision and just kind of narrows it down. So you're looking through a soda straw. So you get a little bit of a warning. Uh, and that's if you're doing a gradual onset of G's. If it's really rapid, it could happen very, very fast, uh, like you mentioned. Wow. Is that part of training? Like they put you through it and you just need to try to not pass out? Right. So uh, when I got checked out in the F-16 uh, before I was uh, became a test pilot, um, I went through a checkout program at, at Luke learning how to fly the airplane and with simulators. And one of the things they had there was um, uh, centrifuge. And, What's that? Okay, a centrifuge, uh, they put you in something like a – looks like a cockpit or just a rudimentary cockpit. Oh, and it rotates and fast it's on in a, a big, long arm, yes, and just spins videos. you around, and you can get up to nine Gs in that thing. I've seen videos. And, uh, yeah, so I have video of myself uh, and when I was going through my training. And you have to be able to withstand uh, the, the nine Gs, and I forget if it was uh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, something like that, that you're straining uh, uh, doing the maneuver – um, and trying to keep conscious and uh, be able to function. And it, if you can't do that, then you, you can't fly the airplane. God, that sucks. So I'm uh, assuming the G training is something they do semi-early on because there's no point in spending money on training you just to later find out you can't handle Gs. Right. Um, with the, the, the guys that were um, – um, I say on the line. That's uh, an airline term, but the 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 guys that were uh, operational in the F-16. I don't know where it was in their um, training that they got the centrifuge. But you're right; that was probably early on. Early, I think. On. Is handling G's something you could train and get better at, or are you either naturally gifted with it or not? Oh, it's you definitely train and get better. They would uh, teach us how to do the maneuver properly. And that was one thing about the centrifuge training was teaching you how to get there and, and, and do the maneuver uh, and to keep conscious under under high G. So there's and, a way to get better right. at it. You know, and, and some guys are um, better at it naturally you know, than others. And so, you know, you know good for them. And right. other guys, if you were uh, short, stocky, look like a fire plug, then uh, – <laughs> It, you were, your body physically was much uh, better at, at uh, withstanding Gs. That's guys so that are tall and thin, not not as easy for those guys. So for you, it was a little – it was Probably, a stretch yeah. to – Oh, yeah, it was not easy for me. I remember I, I, I've looked at those videos of me in the centrifuge, and that was hard. <laughs> but you got better at it. Eventually, you yeah. reached a point where it's like, okay, I could – do you re- do you ever reach a point – I know 9Gs is insane. Do you ever reach a point where you're like, okay, bring it on anytime, 9Gs, I got it? Or is it always like a difficult thing to stay conscious under nine Gs? Oh, it's, it's you're always working at it. Always, yeah, always working at it. Yeah. So you never get to a point where you're good enough and you go, "I could handle well, it." Well, you can handle it, but you're just used to it. You you know what to do. Got it. Yeah. And so you you you'd go and you do the nine Gs, and you do it enough, you know, that you're you're used to it, and so you know how to um, sustain the nine Gs on your body. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, do you start squeezing? When do you start squeezing? Before you even begin turning the airplane or during? Uh, it, right at, at the onset, just a little bit uh, before. Got it. Yeah, so you, you want to lead it. Yeah, if you can lead it, it's good. 